Oh my god, imagine if Corsair would release a golden gaming headset. Yeah, that would never happen. Argibito, am I right? Yep, the microphone is legit, it is so fancy. So this is the Corsair Virtuoso RGB Wireless. Man, Virtuoso, what a name. So there's the SE or special edition version with aluminum sides and then there's the non-SE model and the price delta between the two is $40. The three main differences between the two include a bigger microphone, aluminum side plates instead of nasty gloss and a carry pouch is included with the SE. RGB on the sides is of course free and so is the service from today's sponsor, privacy.com. That keeps your mind at ease from credit or debit card theft with the use of their virtual cards so you never share your personal information when making purchases online Line. more on that later. So I have to give Corsair props for such a well-built headset. It's very simple with aluminum joints, sturdy size extensions that are numbered, and they don't even have the Corsair text on the headband like we see from them all the time. The only branded thing is the Corsair logo cut out on the sides. On the SE, they're using this micro perforation for the RGB that look like pixels, very unique, while the non-SE has this traditional but much brighter illumination with your usual full color palette to choose from. The problem with this micro perforation is literally dirt clog up because the holes are so tiny and uh, because this whole like aluminum side is uh, circular the dirt ends up finding its way into the center and clogs up those pixels or micro perforation and no way to really clean this thing. You could turn off the illumination by lowering brightness to zero in the settings, but this is an example of a QC gone wrong during the design process. However, I do appreciate their commitment to cohesive design elements across the USB dongle, the Type-C cable, and the serious microphone with that awesome dotted pattern. Now, comfort-wise, the headset is light enough without excessive clamping force, so glasses are not an issue. I do like the low-profile rotation of the ear cups to rest on your neck. It's super awesome for a wireless pair. The padding is memory foam like. Unfortunately, the driver wall is completely flat and not angled or curved in any way to avoid contact with your ears. So for me, both ears are making contact with that internal wall, making wearing this headset not very comfortable. The good thing is the clamping force is pretty neutral, so it's not pressing against my ears, uh, but I still prefer thicker padding or some sort of curved or angled or uh, angled or wow or angular section on that internal wall. Now for controls, we have a smooth volume wheel with great resistance. Below that is a wired or wireless switch that also acts as your power button when in the latter position. On the opposite side is the USB Type-C port that is used for charging or using the headset in wired mode. Plus we also have that 3.5 millimeter analog port to use with controllers or smartphones. And then there's the mini USB port for the removable microphone. So on the SE, the omnidirectional microphone is 9.5 millimeters, pretty massive. You can mute it with a button under the mic that then turns the illumination ring red. And that is always in your periphery vision. So you can see when the mic is muted, when it's on. And we also have voice prompts in case you want to hear when you do mute the microphone or when the microphone is unmuted. We do not have any noise cancellation options in the software aside from your mic volume and side tone. And unfortunately, despite them calling this broadcast quality, I feel like it lacks clarity and it sounds a bit closed off despite having pretty decent bass it is kind of muddy and the funny thing is what you listen to now is that recorded by the smaller microphone the non-se version and this one sounds more natural to me with uh, extra clarity great vocal pickup it's not as muddy or bass heavy as the, the the big one so let me know which one sounds best to you in the comments and just to establish a quick baseline comparison, this is the GSP500 from Sennheiser. It is a wired headset, but I use it as the benchmark for gaming headset microphone audio. I think it's the most natural in terms of vocal pickup, great bass, great clarity. Uh, and uh, Corsair is not too far off from it with a small microphone, but the SE microphone sounds much worse. As for mic performance in the USB mode, it is cleaner and less compressed versus wireless, and you can hear that around sharp S's in particular. Kind of disappointing as Corsair's slipstream is supposed to provide high bandwidth wireless communication and really improve the microphone quality on the wireless front, but it does sound better in USB mode. And finally, let's talk audio. I find it really strange that you cannot enable surround sound on the headset itself. There's no like surround sound button. You have to do it through the software only, which is super inconvenient for a gaming headset. You have to exit the game, enable that in the software, 
why. But surround sound performance is actually not too aggressive with environmental expansion, sounded pretty decent in control, uh, but I still would use only stereo mode for games and music and movies too. The volume levels are great, they're equally powerful in both wireless and wired mode, I cannot hear a difference, but I have been spoiled by external amp solutions that are much louder, but at 100% volume, this thing is satisfactory. As for sound performance, to my ears, they sound pretty neutral, with nice roll off on the highlights, not too harsh, it's not too mellow. The bass is present and controlled, it doesn't overpower into the mid-range, which is very well detailed. This is the best Corsair headset that I've ever heard, and this is definitely in my top five in the wireless pairs. They actually EQ very well without distortion too, so if you prefer a little extra bass kick or sharper treble, that can be done in the software. When you connect this thing via USB, you get 24-bit 96 kilohertz fidelity sound, so high resolution, uh, and there's actually a distinguishable quality difference in compression and the controlled or the detail of the bass in wired mode, which is so much better versus when it's in wireless, but still it's quite decent in wireless mode with their slipstream technology. The wireless range is about seven meters in my apartment with direct line of sight, which is about average to other wireless gaming headsets until I start to hear interruptions and signal processing errors and the battery life is rated at 20 hours. I still don't get why Corsair doesn't just give us a percentage indicator. Instead, we have this battery status buried in the settings for some reason. And personally, I like everything to be transparent. So let me tell you about today's sponsor, privacy.com. It's a free service that lets you create virtual credit cards for online merchants like Amazon, Netflix, iTunes, and others. So your real credit and debit cards stay protected in case of breaches from online merchants. Setting up cards is no hassle at all with a handy spend limit customization for each card. So you don't worry about canceling a subscription or changing a card if one gets hacked. Plus you get not a if the card is used elsewhere. The service is free, it's encrypted, and comes with a handy Chrome extension, so visit privacy.com slash HWC to get $5 credit towards your first privacy purchase, that is privacy.com slash HWC. All right, so let me conclude with this Virtuoso RGB wireless and wireless SE headsets. In terms of build quality, they did a fantastic job, uh, but I feel like the SE model, uh, I mean, there's too many compromises in terms of having this dirt clog up and the micro perforation. The microphone, for example, sounded so much better on the non-SE model, I don't know why. And for the $40 saved, the only disadvantage I would say would be the glossy sides. I don't know why they went with the glossy sides. Just go with the matte exterior or like choose a different texture, you know, be innovative. And they sure were, but not in the right spaces, I guess. And for $180, that is the model I would recommend out of the two. And I'm guessing it's kind of competitor versus like the really high-end stuff in terms of audio quality, like the GSP 670, $350. The Arctis Pro Wireless is somewhere around there too. So this is basically half the price. And it does sound better than whatever you can get from HyperX in the wireless department. But then the main culprit here would be comfort and uh, that internal lining and how flat it is and how close it is to the ear. But Everything else, they pretty much nailed it. The microphone quality here is so much better than the SE model. The build quality is awesome. The wireless range is good. And battery life is what you would expect from a wireless gaming pair. So yeah, the non-SE is my recommendation. All right, guys, hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to check out this other relevant content. Subscribe for more. I'll talk to you in the next video.